Rivers and groundwater abstraction are the two principal source of water supply in India. How many of you dare to open a tap and drink the municipal supply directly? Or those who come from rural background, do you directly drink water from a dug well or bore well or from a stream? In most of the cases, if the financial situation allows, people go for some indigenous treatment or use purified water for regular use. If I go back to my memory, 10 to 15 years back, we used to drink municipal water or bore water directly. But now things are drastically changed. We already uh, deliberated on supply side issues and to growing demands. However, it has another dimension as well. The quantum of available surface and groundwater resource is also declining due to quality deterioration or uh, due to restriction of use. The problem is twofold. The first one is the geogenic contaminants and the second one is related to pollution from cultural sources or anthropogenic sources. While good quality water is a boon and helps in environmental and spiritual rejuvenation, poor quality water is a curse. Due to dumping of untreated or partially treated waste from municipal and industrial areas as well as return flow from agriculture areas, orchards and plantation carrying polluted water, water in many of our natural water bodies such as rivers, lakes and ponds is now highly polluted. Release of untreated waste water to surface water bodies from point source is main culprit across the cities. Runoff and leaching from known point sources and agriculture fields to surface bodies and groundwater aquifers complicate the water quality issue in rural areas. Modules on geographical spread of geogenic contaminants and processes and water pollution problems will provide insights into water quality challenge what we face currently. Subsequently, we will also discuss the treatment technologies to purify drinking water and wastewater and recycling of treated wastewater. I have briefed you about various water supply, water demand and water quality related issues in this module. We understand now that India is on the brink of major water crisis as the existing water resources are in peril. Unfortunately, India's water crisis is often attributed to lack of management rather than the supply. The lack of reliable and detailed information on water availability, usage and quality, absence of any initiative to restructure the water institutions, push for large projects, increase footprint of urban water sector, a distressed groundwater lifeline and the sorry state of its river are the major challenges. Yet, issues related to water scarcity and its management have failed to appear as a major issue anywhere in media or politics or in administration. Hence, in this course, I have taken up some of the these issues. Now, first let me highlight the infrastructure issue. In India, post-independence, local small-scale intermediate water management practice were ignored and emphasis has been given to downstream management of water resources through creation of large dams or mega dams. Even after constructing over 4,500 large dams and several thousand additional water management structures, the country has managed to create per capita storage of only over 200 cubic meter. Country's per capita water storage capacity is meager in comparison to per capita storage capacities in countries like Russia, Australia, USA, Brazil and China. Besides, presently, none of the Indian city having adequate storm water drainage system, hence missing the opportunity to store storm water and use it for artificial recharge. Due to poor storage infrastructure, India can store only 6% of rainwater, 
compared to 250% stored by the developed nations. It implies that the problem are not because of water crisis, but it seems to be more of water management crisis. Many more aspects related to infrastructure issues are discussed in module on surface water management. Mismanagement of water resources result in local and regional level water stress and hence the conflict among the various stakeholders. How? Let me explain it. India is blessed with several large and coastal rivers. All large and many coastal rivers drain two or more states and almost 78% of India's geographical area fall within these interstate basins. States construct dams and related structures and regulate downstream water flow, resulting in water sharing conflict among the riparian states. Besides, interbasin transfer of water is another reason for interstate disputes. We already have a long list of interstate water disputes and growing water scarcity might further intensify these conflicts. We will be discussing about these aspects on modules on water dispute and governance in India. India's water crisis is not so much due to an absolute shortage of water but primarily because of misallocation, poor and outdated management and lack of proper conservation of existing resources. Besides, government's policies and incentives often favor insufficient and unproductive water use and may also exacerbate the effect of climate change on water. At the same time, government capacities and initiations lack conviction to improve water management. Absence of institution or weak institution for water use regulation and poor data collection and assessment makes the situation more complex. There is apparent policy paralysis in India once it comes to implementing various policies that do not suit to the immediate interest of the local population and political class. The political clout of industries, contract driven uh, boondoggles, weak enforcement of pollution control agencies and clashing government departments. For example, despite issuing directions and guidelines by central, state and local bodies, creating rainwater harvesting structure in each house, society and commercial building remain on paper. Public also show lack of interest and ignorance in implementing various water conservation measures and pollution acts. Another key factor is adding to the unsuitable use of water resources is pricing of water. Water pricing is among the crucial water demand management tool. It helps in improving water resource allocation, distribution and promotes user efficiency, equity and sustainability. Due to pro-public water pricing, most municipal bodies fail to collect enough revenues for maintenance, replacement and expansion of civic infrastructure. There is no charge on the volume of groundwater use. The use of surface water charged in India is based on irrigated area and do not count the volume of water used. Due to absence of proper water pricing policy, most infrastructure projects do not even recover the cost of operation and maintenance, let alone the full capital cost. Vulnerability and scarcity of water resources are not taken into account by authorities while deciding the prices. Hence, to create adequate infrastructure and manage it sustainably, the Indian government requires to account for the economic value of water. Participants, I believe that I am able to list major issues related to water and its context. We will be learning more about them in coming modules. Thanks.